So let's CD into the storage folder. And you see we've got default.xml. Uh, we want to gedit our default.xml. And you see here it's got the path that we were in earlier with the images folder. Now, so now we created the KVM shared folder, which is stored on our SAN. And so we need to just change the default path to the KVM shared so that we can be sure that all of our image files are stored on the SAN. All right, so we've made that change. Now for the change to take effect, we need to restart the um, libvirt d uh, service. All right, there we go. So we've restarted the service. And just to be safe, let's restart vert manager again. All right, so we got vert manager and it is connected to our local host. So let the first thing we want to do is create a new virtual machine. So we'll click on this create new virtual machine button right here. Let's give the machine a name. We'll call it test six. Now notice it says KVM is not available. This is because I'm running in a virtual machine. Uh, typically, you know, you wouldn't run KVM inside of a virtual machine for production because KVM would be hosting your virtual machines. Uh, in this case, we're running inside of a virtual machine just for the purpose of showing you how it's configured. So you can ignore this message. All right, so we've named our virtual machine test six. We're going to use local install media. So we'll save forward. Now I've got the Fedora 14 uh, ISO, or sorry, yeah, ISO mounted on my KVM node one virtual machine right now. Uh, ignore that. We're going to use ISO image. I'll click browse. And you see I've got this DSL.ISO, this DSL4410.ISO. This is stored on an NFS chair that we just mounted earlier. So I'm going to use this ISO to boot from. We'll say forward. Let's give our virtual machine 128 megabytes of RAM and one CPU. Now, let's. I don't want to allocate the disk space right now, and I only want to give it a one gigabyte hard drive. This is just because it's for demo purposes. I want a really small hard drive. Uh, if we tell it to allocate all the disk space right now, it'll take a while for this step to complete, but you will get a little bit better performance on your virtual machine. Uh, the bonus of not checking this is you get uh, more efficient utilization of your disk space, but it's at the cost of performance. So it depends on how important disk performance is for you. And in many cases, you won't need to check this, but you'll have to do your own testing to decide which works best for you. All right, so let's click forward and we're all finished. So let's click finish. And now it will create the virtual machine. And there we go, it created the virtual machine and it's now starting it up. So here's the splash screen. We're using DSL Linux and it's just a live CD. So it'll now boot up. Now notice when I click in the virtual machine, my mouse cursor sort of goes away. If I hit control alt, it releases my mouse cursor. So let's, uh, oh, control alt. All right, so now the virtual machine's booting up. Um, I'm just gonna move this out of the way for the moment. Now notice we're only connected to local host right now. Now we've got more than one virtual machine. Or I've got more than one KVM host right now. So I want to connect to my other host. So let's click File, Add Connection, and it's a remote host. I'm going to connect using SSH, root is the username, and my host name is KVM node 2 dot local domain. All right, and let's hit connect and now it's asking to verify the uh, the certificate or the RSA fingerprint that's just for verifying the identity of the machine so we'll say yes and now it asks for the root password so let's go ahead and enter the root password into the prompt and now you see I've connected to KVM node 2 there are two other virtual machines running on there and we've got our one virtual machine running here. You see it's finished booting up. This virtual machine's running. Now to migrate this virtual machine to the other host, we just simply right click and select migrate. 
we select the host we want to go to, we say migrate again, and now you see it's moving it. Now since this is a very small virtual machine, it took, shouldn't take very long. Oh. Alright, so now you see this virtual machine here, test 6, is still running in both places now, and this one restarted. Uh, and it says no bootable disk. That's because the viewer was still running when I selected migrate. You need to make sure to close the viewer before you migrate it. Otherwise you'll end up in this situation. So I'm just going to force this one to shut off. But if we come over here to, ver to test 6 and open it, you can see... Oh, it wants us to verify the fingerprint again and re-enter our password. you see test 6 is still running uninterrupted. So before you move your virtual machine, make sure to close the viewer, otherwise it gets confused. Now I'm just going, now since it's confused about this one, I'm just going to close Vert Manager. Let's close the viewer as well. And I'm going to relaunch Vert Manager. And let's reconnect to this one. All right, so we're reconnected. Notice test six is still shut off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and delete this one. And now make sure not to delete associated storage files because that will include the virtual hard disk file. All we want to do is remove this virtual machine from this host because it's already running on this other host. Now to migrate it back, we'll right click, select migrate, migrate it back to localhost, and select migrate. And now it's going to migrate back to localhost. Now notice this time it shut off. That's because we had the viewer closed when we selected migrate. Notice that this, it had CPU usage all the way up until the time we selected migrate, and then this one had none up until it finished migrating. This one's shut off. This one's now running. If we right click open, you can see the virtual machine is still running. Now once again, this one is running. This one's shut off. We don't want the same virtual machine on two servers, so we'll right click and select delete and hit delete again. All right, so at this point, you should know how to uh, set up, install KVM um, and attach it to shared storage and migrate virtual machines between hosts. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at everythingvm.com. And I hope this tutorial has been helpful.